Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on my channel. I'm Photorabs. I do videos about photography, filmmaking, camera tech related reviews, unboxings, action cams, vlogging kits and so on. If you're interested in these topics, I highly appreciate if you go subscribe to my channel. That's a massive help. And in today's video, I'm going to talk a little bit about this DJI Osmo Pocket 3. It's been like a few days I'm using it, I'm playing with it and I found some cons as well as some pros about this camera. I decided to share them with you on this channel in this video. If you're interested in this kind of content, I highly appreciate if you like this video, if you share it around, that's a massive help for my channel. And you can be a member and a supporter for less than two euros per month because this video is not sponsored. This is my honest opinion about this camera. I bought it with my own money. DJI has nothing to say about this video. They will only watch it just now when it will be released on my channel. This DJI Osmo Pocket 3 was released on October 25th, 2023, three years after the release of the DJI Pocket 2 and I've been using it since it was released, since I received it actually and I found seven pros and seven cons so far. I'll be sharing them with you just now. Number one is the biggest improvement on this camera, which is the sensor size. We have a one inch sensor now, comparing to one over 1.7 inch sensor on the DJI Pocket 2. We have less megapixel counts, we have 9.4 now, to 16 megapixels on the DJI Pocket 2. So what does that mean? When we have a low megapixel count with a larger sensor, that means that the pixel size is huge comparing to the previous generation. That means we can gather more light, more information, more details, whether in the shadows or the highlight. We have a better dynamic range, a better image quality, overall image quality, and a better low light capabilities with this camera comparing to the DJI Osmo Pocket 2. And number two on my list is the battery life because on the DJI Pocket 2 I had lots of concerns about the battery. It was not a swappable battery and when the battery is depleted we have to turn off the recording, charge the camera and then use it later on. But now with this one we have a bigger battery built in on this camera so we can shoot for a longer time. We have the fast charging technique, we can charge it up to 80% in 16 minutes and 100% in about 32 minutes if you use the proper charger of course. So this is a great improvement on this one and DJI made this extended battery which is a grip mainly. You can plug it to the camera and then you can use the battery on this one before depleting the battery on the camera itself and that's a great improvement because now when this battery is depleted we can take it out, we can charge it alone and we can continue recording with this one. That means we can record for an unlimited time with this camera because every time we can take out this one, charge it and put it back while continuing the record, the filming on this camera. I really love this feature on DJI Osmo Pocket 3. And number three is this large screen. Now we have a two inch screen on this one, two inch display. So we have about 4.7 times bigger screen on this one comparing to the DJI Osmo Pocket 2 and that's a great improvement on this one. The screen on the DJI Osmo Pocket 2 was too tiny. We had to connect almost all the time the camera to the mobile phone in order to monitor the camera, the screen from the phone and that was not something that I would like to have on a portable camera. I would like to have everything compact and very useful, very handy and very efficient this one is the best solution for such things number four on my list is the autofocus of this camera we have a great and reliable autofocus system very fast very accurate very reliable we have the single point we have the tap to focus which is an amazing feature and we have the continuous autofocus for tracking for vlogging and so on add to that we have the product showcase which is an amazing feature for content creators for vloggers and now we have it on this one that means that this camera is gonna beat the sony zv1 the zv12 the zv1f and all that series of cameras as well as the canon vlogging cameras this one this tiny pocketable size camera is gonna beat all of the other cameras in the market from its category and number five on my list is that on this tiny camera you can adjust the sharpness as well as the noise reduction without going to a post-processing techniques on the computer later on so everything is baked in the camera and that's a great feature we saw it on the dji action 4 and it's a great feature i really liked it because when you vlog you would like to have less digital sharpness on the camera so you can reduce it now on the camera itself and that's a great feature and since it has more or less the same menu system as the dji action 4 if you had that action camera you will be very familiar with the menu on this camera 
Number six on my list is the tracking system. We have the tracking 6.0 on this one compared to the 3.0 on the DJI Pocket 2. Three generation of tracking, three years of difference. That makes sense. And on this one, it's an amazing feature for solo content creators, for vloggers. Now you can rely on it and it will do the job perfectly. I, I had no issues with it at all. I played with it a few times and it's really perfect. I really love it. And number seven on my list is related to this DJI Wireless Mic 2 that comes in the creator combo pack of this DJI Osmo Pocket 3. This mic, by the way, can record internally in 32 bits. That means you can record whether a low voices or high voices, and then you can recover everything on post because it's like when you shoot raw, you can recover the image later on on Lightroom, for example. This one is almost the same, but for the audio, that's a great feature. This is an audio test with the DJI Osmo Pocket 3 and the DJI Wireless Mic 2. I'm recording internally on the microphone, 32-bit float. Let's see whether this microphone can recover my voice when I'm talking in a low voice like now, or when I try to shout like now. Let's see whether this microphone with the wide dynamic range of this one can let me achieve to recover all of these high voices as well as the low voices on the microphones because sometimes I would like to vlog in high voice like now when I'm alone in the forest for example or when I'm in my home studio but sometimes when there are people around I try to talk in a very low voice so let me know if this microphone is suitable for you if you find that it's interesting for you personally this is a great feature on this camera I'm very satisfied with it and I think that I'm gonna switch from the 24 bits that I have to a 32 bit float for all my workflow. But what I like about it is that it has this pairing button here. If you click it, the camera will start recording immediately. So you can use this microphone as a remote control to trigger the camera when you are a little bit far away from it. That's a great feature. And you can click it once again and it stops recording check here when you click it when you click the pairing mode the light becomes red telling you that the camera is recording and when you click it again it stops recording and the led light turn off and if your camera is set to the photo mode you can use this button here to trigger the camera to take the photos for you so this pairing button is a great feature on this one because you can use it as a remote control for the camera whether in video mode or in photo mode and now let's talk a little bit about the cons of this DJI Osmo Pocket 3 well the cons that I found so far if I find some other things on this camera I'll be making sure to share them with you on this channel number one on my list that annoyed me a lot is this wide angle lens here although I love it it's very compact very small and it offers you the 15 mm field of view ideal for vlogging for street walking and so on it has the magnetic mounting so you can snap it directly on the lens it will not fall down at all and that's a great feature but what i don't like about it is that when you turn off the camera look what will happen the front element will not be protected it will be always out like this so I have to remember to take this one out every time I will turn off the camera and then I'll put it back on. So I'm sure I'll be losing this one very soon within weeks, I think. I hope not, but I'm sure that it will happen very soon. And that's the first issue that I found on this camera. I noticed also on this camera, when you turn it on, the gimbal is not centered. You have to center it yourself and that's not very annoying but that means that you cannot really turn on the camera and start recording you have to make sure that the gimbal is centered it could be that we had the wide angle lens and it's a matter of weight it's used to the wide angle lens and now i don't have it but i tried it many times even without the wide angle lens and i had this issue on this camera i'm not sure that it's an issue on all the units of the camera it might be my unit but look once again now the camera is off and when I turn it on you can see that the gimbal is not very centered I have to double click on this knob here to center it so 
uh, it's not a big deal for me but I wanted to mention it in this video number three is about the tracking system we don't have a 360 tracking system because the gimbal has some limitation some physical limitation it cannot turn to all the directions as we want so we cannot expect to have a 360 uh, tracking system with this camera check from here This is not a big issue, it's not a big deal for me, I don't use it so much. It might be a big deal for you, so if you are in the market to buy a camera that offers a 360 tracking, then this one is not the camera to go with. Number 4 on my list is related to the slow motion capabilities of this camera. We can record in 4K 120 frames per second only in the slow motion video mode. What does that mean? Is that on the memory card you will have two files, one for the video and one for the audio. If you would like to have the audio on your video, you have to sync them yourself on post. While on the DJI Action 4, we have the same menu, we have the same uh, settings, but we can also record in 4K 120 in the normal video mode. That means we will have only one file on the memory card, the audio and the video will be baked together and that's a great feature there. I think that DJI will add it as a firmware update on this camera very soon. It's much easier to have only one video mode where you can swipe between the 4K 120, the 4K 60 and the 4K 25 frames per second easily without going to a slow motion video mode which is a dedicated video mode for slow motion and have two files separated on your memory card. Number 5 on my list is related to this DJI wireless mic 2 even though it's a great microphone but I only can record in mono mode when it's connected to the camera I'm not talking about the internal recording I'm talking about the recording on the camera itself with this wireless transmitter it always records in mono mode I tried everything, I couldn't succeed to make it work in the stereo mode. If you know how it works in stereo mode, please let me know that in the comment section below. Number 6 on my list is that this camera is not waterproof at all. We have the USB-C port here, no covers. We have the memory card slot here, no covers at all. So this camera is not waterproofed. Now we are in the autumn winter season in France. That means that we'll have lots of rain. I cannot be using this for so much time during the season that's very annoying because for this amount of price 679 euros for the creator kit combo or the 535 euros for the standalone version well I think they could have added some silicon thing here I'm sure that third party manufacturers will create a box or a housing for this one to cover it up so we can use it in a rainy situation so let's wait and see because this camera is very capable but it's not waterproof and i live in france so let's wait and see and number seven is this pouch here well it's a very nice looking pouch but it's too small too tight if i would like to put the camera the dji osmo pocket 3 if i would like to put the battery handle and the microphone as well as maybe the tripod base it will be very tight so i'm not a big fan of this pouch even though it looks very nice it's the design is very nice i love it but it's too small i think it could have been a little bit bigger especially that we have the option of the extended battery life so i would prefer to have something where i can store this camera with the extended battery together without the need to take it off every time that would be even better i'm sure that other manufacturers will make this pouch very soon so i'm very excited to see them coming up in this season so that was it for today's video i hope you enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done it check my affiliate links in the description below i have lots of promo codes lots of discounts on photography and videography products that i've talked about previously on my channel by buying from my affiliate links you can save some money and you can help my channel a lot and thank you for watching see you on another one ciao for now